Welcome back to FullBibleTimeline.com. My name is Mark Hutzler. I'm going to give you uh, more of an overview of the Bible Timeline so that uh, you get a real appreciation for the content on the Timeline. I'm going to go pretty quick, but in other videos we're going to go more in-depth on each and every section of the chart. Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to be using the online digital version. This is a Prezi called a Zooming presentation. And this is a powerful tool to use for Sunday school, Bible teaching, your, uh, your classes, uh, or just a home group, a home study. Uh, the chart, the full chart, is available as a nine foot full color vinyl chart, also available on our website, fullbibletimeline.com. So there are simple tools to navigate. You just need your arrow keys and your mouse, and you can navigate through the entire chart. I'm just gonna zoom out give you a bird's eye view of the chart in its nine foot wonder. Now we're going to zoom in and you can see the chart is full of information but just for um, the purpose of this walkthrough I'm not going to go into the specifics but I'm going to give you the, some generalities here. So across the top of the chart and I'm, this section here is historical uh, dynasties that ruled the world. And we're going to just zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. The top of the chart here, we go and we take a study of Egyptian time periods. So ancient Egyptian kingdoms and highlights through that ancient Egyptian kingdom, and ancient, well, ancient Egypt and uh, the various uh, kingdom periods. But there's some very fascinating aspects of the Egyptian history and historical events that took place in Egypt that dovetail and uh, fall in sync with the biblical account of, uh, of history and what took place. And I illustrate to you clearly in the chart how they intersect because the Bible uh, part of history, the Bible historical timeline, is across the whole bottom of the chart. And I'm, I'm matching that up to the historical time period across the top. So by the time we get to uh, 335 from the fall, so that would be equivalent to about 600 uh, BC, we come into the Egyptian time period, the Egyptian dynasties kind of died away, and the Assyrian Empire rose up. The, the Chaldean or the Babylonian Empire had a period of time that uh, was in sync with the Assyrian Empire. It's represented here by the Burgundy. And then we moved into the Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, and all of this uh, history moves all the way through the entire length of the timeline, right up into the Dark Ages, the Industrial Revolution, the Atomic Age, and right up to present day. So that is the entire um, top section of the chart. I want to uh, just highlight this section here in pink up at the top running across the entire, uh, well, not the entire, but a significant portion, certainly since the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD, we have Jewish historic highlights. And they are mentioned here, this is a little walk through of what it's been like to be a Jew for the last 2000 years. It has not been a picnic. So for example, um, Jews are all expelled from England uh, by Edward I after the banning of usury in the 1275 Statute of Jewelry, and that is number five, and we can see that that took place in 1290 AD. That's right down in here. We'll zoom in. So all of these uh, pink boxes with historic markers for, uh, you know, what took place for Jews is indicated by uh, this numbering system at the top of the chart. So we're going to just move off the top of the chart now. We're going to come back here to the beginning and the bottom section of the chart. I've already done videos on the specifics on how to read the chart and walk through the chart. Uh, all, there's, all the instructions are actually on the chart themselves uh, or itself, so you can see that. Uh, across the bottom of the chart, we have all these blow-up sections and big color blocks that are specific studies over certain aspects of the chart that I thought you may find interesting. You can see across the entire bottom of the chart, we have these green boxes. 
Now this runs the entire length of the chart. And these green boxes are prophetic messages um, from Genesis 3.15, the first promise, the first prophecy about how um, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. That is given in Genesis 3.15, and one of the New Testament verses illustrating how that came to pass, I've notated here in yellow, Galatians 4.4. 4. So all the way across the chart, there are these prophetic messages about Christ, a descendant of Abraham, a descendant of Jacob, of the tribe of Judah, and this, the prophecies get more and more specific as we move through the Old Testament verse, our prophecy is given, and then the New Testament fulfillment is given in yellow. There are sections here on carbon dating and uh, a little bit of a synopsis on how carbon dating works so that you can get an understanding on what the world is trying to sell you. Uh, different characters are highlighted here as you work through Jacob, Jacob's life, Jacob's life and the birth of his children and when those uh, children were born. And uh, this is taken from uh, there's several uh, people who have done exhaustive studies um, in this field. One of them is Rever Reverend Charles Zimmerman, uh, to whom I give credit for this research. Abraham's life and Abraham's birth. Jacob, um, from Jacob to Moses, the generations. We move into the Exodus, Moses' life. And there's extensive study notes in here about these time periods and about exactly how long Israel was in Egypt in the position of being slaves. So we have across the bottom here the period of the judges and who was the judge at which time, uh, the time of Ruth and Boaz. Uh, we have all the study notes across here. We have the kings of Judah and who was the king um, when, the years that they reigned, and this keeps going. It's a non-stop Solomon's temple, Solomon's temple being born or, or being created. Uh, various prophets and when those prophets lived. Some of them we just we just can't find out the information. We have uh, uh, some information, but we don't have everything, for example, on Obadiah uh, or on Joel. Uh, some wonderful study notes from Clark's commentary and various other uh, sources of research, including the Babylonian Talmud. We have uh, special blow-ups here on various individuals in that line uh, from Adam to Jesus. Uh, this is the family line of uh, David, Solomon, Boaz, Obed, Jesse, David, and, and a little write-up about uh, each one of those characters, some of which I think, uh, A, you may have never heard uh, about in regards to David's early years and uh, Jesse's uh, struggles, but uh, I think you'll find it fascinating. We move into the 400-year uh, period after the exile in Babylon, and we move into the life of Christ, the early centuries uh, of the church. Uh, a very detailed synopsis on the life of Christ and the various kings, uh, King Herods, that there were Herod the Great, Herod Achilles, Herod Antipas, Herod Agrippa I that we read about in Acts. So lots of Herods, and it's easy to get them confused, and so I've uh, spelled them out for us here. Uh, these light blue boxes, there's a couple of them in the chart, and they're just pulling out information from the Babylonian Talmud, which is a Jewish uh, historical uh, book. Um, and I think uh, some of the information in there that you're just going to find absolutely fascinating and uh, really confirms uh, scripture for us today. We move into, as I mentioned, past and through the revivalists, Jewish millennial concepts into the three millennial periods, and the chart wraps up at the end. So that's a quick little overview. And now we're going to go into some, some detail. So stay tuned.